after they shot after after Demi, after Demetrius got shot in the ass, Bad Wolf, right? Mm-hmm. After he got shot in the ass, he went to the doctor, he went to the hospital, whatever. The 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 the, the lead homicide detective on the case interviewed Demetrius. That the lead homicide detective that interviewed him, his name is David Vince Vasquez, who is the very the lead. He's the lead motherfucking uh, the lead actor right now on Atlanta Homicide. The same guy. Mm. How special? How special is that? Right, right, right. Same guy. I got the whole. I got the whole interview, and me's went in there with no attorney and bust him down. I got the whole thing. When I was a young, when I was a young cat, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I was, a, I was a young fella. I remember watching y'all guys do y'all thing. He be my uncle, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I take care of a lot of. His business, Carl yeah, Coke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's duck, ducking and running. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Y'all niggas did the beard. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, we, yeah, hey, Dex, yeah, we appreciate yeah, it too, man, yeah, because yeah. the real and, and the truth need to be spoken. Because right. there's so much phony shit out here right. that they're not even respecting right. the niggas that's from the, the, the beginning. From the beginning. That's why we straightening this out. We finna, we finna, we finna straighten all that out. I'm throwing. Hey, anybody that's, that, that that didn't say nothing ain't got. If you said something, you better you, you got something to worry about. Cause I got your pictures and everything. I'm finna throw you out there. I'm oh, telling that, you right shift, now. Shifting to get real. And I'm starting from the top. I ain't starting from the bottom. How many total, quote unquote, snitches was attached to the BMF, you know, camp that you you know of? Well, you had they, they interchanged because you had some guys that was over there, and then they came over and they switched back, and then they switched back over. So, but maybe about four or five guys out of all the rest of the guys that told us, say maybe out of a total of 30, 30, 39 guys, maybe about four or five guys played back and forth, switched over, and and told. But the but the majority of them was was two six three members. Mm. And two six three meaning that that was a part of uh, T. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Now, um, now, as of recently, we're going back to the Fifty Cent thing with the series. I've seen, I've been seeing him be taking pictures with Little Meech, and um, and I've seen like different quote unquote fractions. You see some of the BMF members um, online supporting it, and then some people online not supporting it. And so it's kind of confusing some of the viewers or the people on the outside looking in. I, I'm seeing those questions. I'm seeing people leaving comments like, well, such and such is supporting it or such and such is not supporting it. What's going on? This and that. Like, right. I, I, what, what's your right. thoughts on that? Right. Well, first of all, I like that because because it's going it, it, to there's a there's a, as, as you see that <clears throat> there's a there's there. They, we are all together, but we have separate we have separate. Uh, organizations that we belong to and some of us even though we belong to separate organizations we are friends we still friends so some people is upset with some things and some people are not you understand but they're not they but they're all claiming to be something that they're a lot of them is claiming to be something that they're not what they weren't involved with even though they may have started off that way but when they separated when they separated they went their own separate ways that was the identity that they took but the, the the popular identity is the Black Mafia family is the BMF, so that's the one that's ringing out here. Nobody's saying two six three. Like for instance, Terry Son right now, Terry Son, Lil T, my man, my nephew. That's my nephew. He's he's representing his dad's brand two six three. But you don't see Tony around here supporting that. You don't see Tony Son around here supporting him. Instead, they jump. We're here on the Black Mafia family, something that she had nothing to do with it other than bring it down. Why is that? But then she said everybody else is being disrespectful to T. She don't have no respect. Why is Why she's not supporting it? Because BMF is the is the hot brand. She's not she's trying to get something for nothing and she's and she's and she's trying to get something. She's trying to remember when they was gonna get ready to do the BMF wife. Misha was not supporting that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Why why is that? That that didn't jump off. Because she was involved. You had that girl on there named Janelle. She was on there faking like she was Big Meat's wife. And she came to my house, told my mom on the phone, on the porch, right there on the front porch, that, yeah, uh, uh, Big Meat told me all about uh, Talise, you know, which is my sister, the real first lady. Yeah, but she was just a roundaway girl. But my sister was with this girl 14 years, and she don't even know she hanging out with Manisa, not even knowing that Manisa, mama is... Is is it was is Talise my sister, which was Misha's girl. That's his baby's mama. That's how stupid she was. She don't even know. <laughs> I mean, these people just got people around here. They 
they fan in and they they coming around. She went over to Demetrius. Uh, Janelle went over to the big niece wifey. Went over to Demetrius' mama house to go over there to get his birth certificate. And she would Miss Finnery wouldn't even come down. Lucia wouldn't even come down to speak to her. Now this right down here. This is uh, right around here. Actually, I'm gonna show you. That's me in them house right there on the hill. That's the back part. This is the hill that we took. We came around on when uh, we was getting chased by the ATF and they didn't know the neighborhood. So we got away when we jumped out right here and ran back to the house, man. Lost and we shook the shit out of him. She came back over to the house. My mom got the, I got the birth certificates and his social security card right now. Right to this day. I got it. He left all his personal stuff at my mom's house. My mom and my dad been mom and dad to him also. I was the last guy to see his dad in the hospital before he passed last year. Yeah, but this is the type of thing that's going on that has to stop now. You have to stop this. And the only way it's going to stop is the truth come out. And some people ain't going to like it. Right. But just think of what, what, what the real people that's been out here. That the, You notice something I'm going to tell you. The real guys that's been out here, the real people that's really involved in the family, they not speaking because they know who they are. They don't have to prove nothing. It's these all these this faking going on. You got a bunch of people faking that that didn't go to jail for this. What happened when they was where were y'all when they were passing out the time, bro? Sisters, where were y'all at? Everybody disappeared. It was a ghost town. Nobody wanted to take no calls. Nobody wanted to speak to you or nothing. But we not mad. I'm not mad. We not mad about it. That's just the way the game goes. But now, but but but, but know your place though. Know your place now. Know your place. So that's the reason why 50 Cent or uh, Curtis Jackson, he's not going to, because he stole somebody else's name before he was 50 Cent. He was Curtis Jackson. He, so he stole this man's name. Now he want to come over here and steal the, our identity. He want to come over here and use the black, the BMF, Black Mafia family. When in actuality, only thing he has is, is Demetrius Flannery rights to tell his life story. He has nothing else. I got the paperwork. I got it when it was signed on the, the 2014. I got it. I got everything about him. He was trying to push his liquor down here, uh, the, the Branson liquor. He doesn't even have a distributor. He was going to use the, the BMF brand to, to, to cross promote that liquor. And that's an infringement on my trademark. Mm. And he will be seeing me again. It's already going down, bro. So I'm just trying to get this man a chance to come out. And man, I'll make you, I'll make you do what you want. You want to be the kingpin? I can make you the kingpin. We are not mad at you, bro, but it's this is you being disrespectful. That's all. But 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 we we businessmen. We can work together and not get along. We can work together. Let's get money. Right. I don't know you like that. I I approached I approached him twice when he was here on eight mile when he was selling the effing vodka. And then he went over here in the southwest Detroit area and he was over there and I went to him twice. He looked up and seen me again. I said, It's me again. I gave him the letter that he posted online and said Demetri that Demetrius sent it to him. Mm, so you gave him that letter I gave him that letter I gave it to him I said you look at this letter man that's me you holler at me man I gave him my card and everything that dude never called me but he posted it online and said it made it seem like big me said that's it directly right. to him and what was yeah. this letter about it was just basically just letting him know that hey this is my man Salsa you know because me and him was talking I told him my name Salsa I put it out I had my business card I gave it to him and everything I said man you can get in touch with me I said you ain't got to worry about writing no script or nothing I got 40,000 pages I got hours and hours of surveillance I got wiretaps I got it written wiretaps I got it translated I said I got bank statements I have uh uh, Castiga letters, proper letters. I have a uh, 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 grand jury testimony. I have uh, uh, IRS, DEA, ATF, HIDTA. I have all the all the interviews, the memorandums. I have all the special investigative reports. I got everything. Holla at me. And he, and that's and all of this is what's inside of the Black Mafia family blueprint to conspiracy ebook and everything. Well, exactly. But let me say the ebook is only can only allow me with so many pages. So what I'll be doing is every three, every four months, I'll be switching up, giving you different looks. And in the meantime, I'll be posting up pages within the uh, within the Instagram page so people can see so I can give you the blueprint to conspiracy. And what I want the people to know is I'm not here attacking the government. It's not the government that you have to worry about. It's the people that you, you you spend your time with every day that come in the house to kiss your kids, to be around your mom, that's around your sister and your brothers. Those are the people you're going to have to worry That's the conspiracy. They're going to turn against you and you out in the streets. What I'm trying to do is save lives. What y'all need to do is find y'all another game, bro, because they're going to keep filling these prisons up with y'all, man. And it ain't the government. It's going to be the man next to you. Right. That's the blueprint. That's the blueprint. 
And and that's something that I did want to um, ask you, you know, if someone was listening to this and was wondering, you know, what's what's your overall objective of now wanting to put out this information? You know, what would your answer be to that? Was it pretty much what you just said or? Yes, we, we control everything. We are uh, we, our money controls everything without us. There's nothing. So what we need to do is start putting together. And, and let's make things happen. I don't want to argue with this man. I ain't got nothing against this man. I don't even know him. But he's not going to just piss on his legacy like that. But none of that. You're not going to just omit real men out here. There are people that people that good men that are still in jail. You're not going to do it. Man, look, bro, we can make money, man, to have fun, man. This is, this is all. This is what the movement was all about. We was bringing people. We was bringing us together. You don't get nothing like this nowhere. Everybody moved like brothers, and then everybody from different places. Milwaukee, St. Louis, Detroit, Texas, Atlanta, Cali, you know what I'm saying, Florida. That man, Lauren, Lauren Cohn down there in New York, that's a smart man. That man was fixing to bring all this together and going to let us just run this, go run. We was going to bring it together. This man was going to be mega, mega rich. Can you, can you come back some? Can you say that name again? Who did you just say? My man, Lor, 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 Lior Cohen, Lior Cohen. Oh, Lior Cohen. New York, yeah, that man there was. We, we was down there meeting with him in New York. We and the fans came in and said, man, he came in twice and said, man, if you, if, if you, if you sign this man, we gonna come in and investigate you. They, he said, look, when y'all get that together, come back and holler at him. And that's what happened right before they took us down. So that's what. So Leo Corian had a deal on the table to sign BMF. Yeah, yes, and we then, was on our way. It and, was the entertainment. We was on our way. We was done with the streets. The and, streets was bent over. <laughs> and, and what year was around? What year was this? That was 1985, 84, 85, just before the takedown. That's why they had to hurry up because they was running out of time. So huh. they came up. They came up with the Doc Marshall story. They came up with the Doc Marshall story, and. And I got the paperwork where you're gonna see how they were, how they were leading, how the whole the whole testimony was leading to the grand jury, and, and they got their indictments and they came down and grabbed everybody up. And huh. that's what happened. You said 1980 or 1990 something? No, I said 19. I mean 2005. I'm sorry. Oh, 2005. Okay, so this is 2005 yeah. is when the meetings with Leo Cohen and all that stuff. So this was around the, basically around the same time, or maybe a little bit after, when uh, Jeezy and Fabulous and Blue Da Vinci did the song out there in New York. Yes, all that was around, that was the time that the meetings was taking place. At the same time, we was down there with Jigga and them. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly, exactly. The right time, you got it right. Exactly. Were we was on our way. We was done, dude. The streets was over. We was out of the street. We were the Black Mafia family was out the streets. <clears throat> on we that side, done. right? Yeah, we were done on that side. I don't know what Tina was doing, but we were done. Because a lot of people, I, even with the DVDs and everything, a lot of people said Big Meech had a 50-50 chance or even higher if he possibly even went to court and tried to really fight it that he possibly could have beat it on his end that they didn't have a lot against him. It was more or they less. They didn't. Now, let me tell you what happened. What had happened was they had his mother talking to T on the phone and his sister talking to T on the phone about T talking about doing something to meet. They played, they played one of the agents played, played that at the dog kennel to me and Meech. Me and Meech went out there. Meech was really hurt. But the agent came back and played the the, the, the killing where he said he was going, but T said he was going to have something done to Meech. You know, Meech, because Meech bringing us into a bad light and this and that and the other. And they heard their mother discussing some stuff, you know what I'm saying? And they knew. So what they did was they told Demetrius, we already got your dad and we got your brother and we got your mom and your sister too on the recording. Da 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 da. Now you're gonna take something, or we're gonna lock them, you're gonna lock them up. And he could have just walked. So what had happened was they came up with another deal in, in, in the room. The prosecution came up with another deal, and 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 the Demetrius, I got the, it's called the detention hearing. I got the detention hearing as well as the wolf shooting interview. I got all this, dude. I got everything. It's very interesting. It's it's a great read, dude. You read this, but this is not what I'm saying. This is I got the document. Mm -hmm. So they what they were gonna do was they said, look, if you don't take this plea we're getting ready to give you, we're going to lock your mom and your sister up. So he took the plea. He knew they ain't had nothing. So he's looking at 12, 15 years. 
Mm-hmm. And then the judge went back, and once he took the plea shit, they slammed him. They doubled back and made it third. They, they slammed him. Showed it. And that's basically and that's what happened. And that's basically what they've been fighting with these appeals this whole time. Because I heard, you know, of course, from the outside looking in, and I heard like it's a lot of stuff in this paperwork that he got charged twice with this and that. You know what I mean? To, yes. to inflate yes. the time. Yes, and that's why I'm telling you, they went to my sister and was trying to get my sister to come and get him for child support or anything. My sister said no. My whole family was like, hell no, why would I do that? You know, I mean, they were just relentless. They these are the they, they are deviants now. They deviants. They they're gonna win by any means necessary. They don't care. They they don't I got I have a I have I have several different Grand jury, uh, grand jury indictment papers that they had to redact several times because they thought I was Hispanic. They didn't know who, who I was. They didn't know nothing about me. So this is how this is how, this is how these people play. When I went in there and I told them them that I wasn't Hispanic, you know, what I'm saying based on on that criteria alone, this case should be dismissed. They went back and redacted and sent me another. They was not gonna let me go. Even in the courtroom, the judge told the prosecutor. He said that, look here, if you lose this one, it's not coming out of my pocket. Oh, my kids, my mom, and I'm going to tell you this. Mm. So they was not going to lose. They were, they, were, they were trying to get everybody that they could off this case. They made money off this case, $270 million. That's crazy. And- yeah, it was, it was a money. It was a, it was a money. It was, hey, and, and my, my, case, my case was worth $4 million out of, out, of, out, of the bank, out, of, out of Louisiana, out of, the, out of the Chase Bank of Louisiana. I got all the paperwork. I looked it all up. And where were you actually? You were sentenced and went to court in, in Louisiana or in Michigan? No, no, in Detroit. That's where they got their loans from. Right. Oh, okay. Two. Yeah, I was two. downtown. I'm on the big case. I was on the major case, on the main case. Anybody that wasn't on the main case, they weren't on the main case. They, they were, they were all in St. Louis and other places. But I was downtown in Detroit with the original. Now, this is a question I want to ask, and something I always thought of, and I throughout this time of you know, I hate to keep referring and being redundant with saying, okay, the DVDs. We see interviews of different BMF members on different platforms, and I, you know, of course, I. From what I do as being a platform, I have to read comments and having conversations with people and people feel like, you know, um, these enterprises and stuff like that as far as hurting the community. During this time from 85 to 2004, were there any things that BMF did with the money that was like giving back to people and helping or in, or any type of ways? All the time, man. We were supporting all the kids, all the, all the, the football programs, basketball programs. Uh, we were... We were, were were putting people in homes, feeding homeless, giving people, getting helping people start businesses up. Uh, what else? Um, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you name it. A lot of the businesses that was coming up, we supported all that. I mean, a lot of the the, the athletes and stuff like that that were that were in school and stuff like that that that, that, that these colleges wasn't paying. We took care of all of them. You know, a lot of people were coming back like, yo, man, I appreciate that. You know, here, take this money. And do. They wanted to do things for you. We would never take the money. You know what I'm saying? We would never take the money. I mean, it was just phenomenal. As you know, when we stopped, when we stopped doing what we did, the whole economy fell. I mean, literally, everything fell. So, you know, it's, it was just a crash. Man, I mean, we were, we were really supporting a lot of stuff behind the closed doors we were really pushing you know i i won't say where or who but yeah and in some of these places are still a lot of these places a lot of these people even today especially in the music industry a lot of these people are doing very very well and they're doing well and in these clubs because of the support that we gave them back in the day and the money that that was given out i mean you had all kinds of guys even up to boxers boxing promoters and stuff like that we had everybody we, we were doing everything everybody was eating Right. Everybody, you know, and it was just money. We didn't care because it's, it's, let me say something. It's not about the money. It's the people. That's the power. The people is the power, not the money. It's good to have money, but the power is in the people and how you treat them. That's the, that's the power. That's the money. That's the goal. That's the value. Right. And we do that. Now, just recently, you know, j from BMF just came home. Um, mm-hmm. Is there a particular reason why like j Fabulous and other people that, you know, that's known to be connected to BMF during that time back in the day did not go down to the festivities and everything this this prior weekend or anything dealing with like the casting call or anything else with 50 Cent? Because it's disrespectful. 
they not messing. See, this, see, this, this, they gotta understand something. Them guys, uh, they, they, they don't, they not gonna mess with him. I can tell you that they won't, they won't mess with this guy like that. You know what I'm saying? It have to be somebody that a good go between. Me, I'm the only guy that really that a go in there that can that can that can make something really happen here, dude. I'm the only one. I know exactly what was needed and what's not needed. Let me handle this and you handle that. And I guarantee you, you they're gonna come along. They will come along. I know just what to do, man. This is what dude was gonna do. Oh, this is not this is not Sauce's dream. This is not what Sauce. So I'm not putting this together. I'm just following the blueprint that dude that, that we had already laid down. This was this was something, but this is his mouth. This was his baby. I'm just trying to I'm trying to fulfill it. I would why would why would Meach be over there with 50 and nobody else support that? Because they don't like 50, but they'll support dude. But it's gotta be somebody here to go between. That's why when I came home, I got the trademark and I got the whole case. Holler at me, dog. I've been there since 85. Holler at me, dude. You're not gonna be able to do it without me because I'm the only go between here. I'm the only go between. Nobody else is gonna mess with you. And it ain't gonna work because I got the train. And a lot of people kind of consider you during this era of everything. They considered you kind of like the ghost of BMF. You know, I was, right? I'm the James St. Patrick. And I'm the ghost, the real ghost, the Patrick Swayze around here. Because they, I, they, anybody that knew knew I ran the whole show quietly. But I'm not the I'm not the guy that going out to the clubs. I don't dress in the big saggy pants and all that. I dress up. I'm a I'm a I am an old school D boy. I'm big black gators, baby. You know what I'm saying? Gabs and two pants, two coats and shit, and sports coats. I, I I don't do that. I ain't flashy. I might buy something decent, but I, I ain't flashy like that. I, I don't I don't need the spotlight. I don't like the camera. You know, I talk a lot of I talk a lot of crap and stuff like that, but that's not me. I'm, I, I like the business. I'm excited about doing the business, man. I'm just excited with the business. That's adrenaline for me. I love that. Right. I'm high energy. I love that. I love going in, into your town talking crap, showing you how to make this bag work. I love that. That's what I did. I was I've been adapted to that. I've been doing that since '85. Yeah. Now I want to speak. I want to get to know who is Richard Maurice Garrett, aka Baba. And what that was that guy? Mm -hmm. That guy. I grew up with him. We grew up in the projects together. The same place I was telling you. His his father, Fishman, and my uncle. My uncle Bobby was was real close. They were, you know, they were into their things in the street. So I grew up with Baba all the way. We went to high school together. We went to college together and everything. This guy ended up telling on me. After all this, this is how that's how close this is. This is what I'm trying to tell the people about the blueprint experience. This was just about. You can grow up with somebody from the sandbox all the way to the end and they'll turn on you. This is and I, this is that hurts that hurt me. That's why I put this guy face out there because I want y'all to know because he hurt me. His name is in my paperwork all through it. He told all on me. He know everything about me. This guy we laid together in the same dorm room in college. Okay, so what was? Can you paint the picture of what actually happened that got him in custody to put him in a position to tell on you? Okay, what happened was we were out in Gardena and we had run to a bad spell just before we met the. The Mexican mafia before we met the before we met the essays, and and uh, he had something like one hundred forty thousand dollars that was on the book. We was gonna use all that. Me, we, me, him, T, me, and the old man. We was gonna put all our money together and go get us a bag from somebody. You know what I'm saying? And, and try to work this back. He had more money than all of us, but our money still would have added up to a nice lump sum. He wanted his money, so we gave him his money. He took off, so he was out. Then he went down there and got with J Rock now. My man Davis, J Rock now, he got with them. And J Rock and them ended up running him over. So he saw us again in 2002. We, we back on top. We saw him in Magic City. And he was sitting over there. He's like, yeah, I want to come back. And dude was like, man, you was a boss over here. You know, went over there. He's like, no, man, you know, this is what loyalty gets you over here. So ever since then, he's just been bitter. So when he had a chance to strike out against him, he did. And that's what happened. Mm. And we all grew up together. But I told Meech and him, I never really liked Baba and the Stars from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I never really cared for him. And I told dude, I said, man, you're making a mistake by bringing this dude in.